So I had this really useful video planned for today where I, I, I messed up one of my laptops by trying to overclock it and I bricked it and couldn't get it to boot. It wouldn't post or anything like that. And uh, I disassembled it to you know reset it and all that and I thought this would make a very useful video. I'm sure there's someone out there that has a laptop that's not turning on because something got messed up in the BIOS. But instead of making that super useful video that uh, actually serves a purpose, somebody had sent me a video a while back showing me where someone had actually water cooled an air cooler on a, a CPU and I thought that's stupid. Why, why, why would you do that? And then it dawned on me, we do stupid things. So why not double down on the stupid and LN2 cool our heat sink. Rule the games from the seven kingdoms with your iron claw mouse from your iron throne. It has a scroll wheel that looks like an off-road tire and buttons on the side and top to do stuff. Don't lose grip while doing stuff with the textured sides and do it in style with the RGB. Learn more at Corsair.com. So here's our setup right here. It's a AMD 1800X hooked up to a, an Asus X370, yeah, something like that. I don't know, X370i, I think, ITX board. The reason why it's ITX, you'll, you'll see in a minute. The graphics card, it's just a cheap 1050 without supplemental power or any PCIe power because we want to be able to keep it out of the way. Um, yeah, and then we have an 850 watt power supply because we're not really trying to see what happens with the overclocks. We're trying to see what, whether or not this proof of concept would even work. But before we can determine if it works, we have to first see what our baseline is. So we've actually had our test running here for a while. Um, we're currently at 59C. This will warm up to approximately 63, 64C at its hottest. This is the latest BIOS, so this isn't showing us the offset. This is the actual physical temperature number. But as you can see, it is slowly climbing and it will max out right around 63C. So that's gonna be our baseline. We are not gonna be doing, uh, like I said, doing any overclocking attempts or anything like that. In fact, the fact that I even bought 10 liters of liquid nitrogen um, without the purpose of continuing our Rip Steve, because we still have to do that at some point. But Der Bauer came in and said, rip the world, which happens and that kind of takes some of the wind out of your sails and some of the liquid nitrogen out of your pots. Rip your sails. Rips your sails and then you have no sails and you can't go forward. Where did this just go? I don't know. <laughs> Somehow we're gonna take this and the liquid nitrogen, that and the, that, the thing and go. When we were doing our latest Rip GN, um, which was several months ago now, we had the pot with a lot of that, the, the vapors overflowing because the liquid nitrogen gas is heavier than air. So it settles and it falls down. And it was falling onto our uh, EBGA motherboards like heatsink uh, fans for the VRM. And then we started hearing this really like crazy kind of a motor noise, like a, it was like a grinding sound. And we realized we were freezing the fan. The fan bearings and like the fluid in there, because it is a fluid bearing, was freezing until we would like take a fan and have it blow up and pull the vapors away. Then it would thaw out and it ran perfectly fine. So I thought to myself, the VRMs were being extremely cooled as well as the RAM, just the vapors was making it so touching the RAM was extremely chilly. So it got me thinking, what happens if we use vapor to cool the heat sink? Now Phil and I actually have two very different hypotheses on what's gonna happen here. He thinks it's not gonna cool any better than when I pointed the air conditioner at uh, an air-cooled heat sink. We did that once before. We plumbed it in the front of a case. It was all the standard air cooler and stuff and then it, it ran fairly cool. But we found that there was obviously an inefficient contact um, and conductive or conduct con, con, the movement of heat between the high IHS and an air cooler versus like a water block or whatever, where it's making more direct contact with the metal that's touching the thing it's cooling. This has to go through the pipes and all that. So Phil thinks it's gonna work about as good as blowing an air conditioner at a heat sink. I think it's gonna work a little better. I think it's gonna actually cool the heat sink enough to where it's gonna get so far below ambient that it's gonna actually have a slight chilling effect, but no better than water. So I'm expecting it to be probably in the 40 degree range-ish at load. Uh, I'll say 50. You're gonna okay. say 50? I'll yeah, say 45, 40. 43, oh, 43, fine, 43. Prices right me and be like, 49. 49. <laughs> now, although our table's kind of scratched and beat up, it has paint and stuff on it, I don't wanna damage our table, so I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna use something I'm willing to get rid of that doesn't have any serious value around here. That being, of course, the Gamers Nexus mod mat. Ah, it's flashing back at me. So this is the scary part. 
You don't want to use gloves because if it gets poured on the gloves, then it will burn you more than if it hits your hand because of the laden frost effect. But if I pour it in this, this is just gonna freeze. And you don't want to touch this without gloves. I'm gonna pour the bare hand and handle this with the rubber glove. Cause that's rubber. This is what we use when, like technically this comes with the tube bending kit for when you touch the hot tubes, but I touch those with my bare hands too, so. It still says fan, ah, it's called, okay. I just touched it with my fingers. <laughs> And you don't want to touch this without gloves. Essentially what we've done here is a super ghetto swamp cooler. All right, so here's v V2 of the crap LN2 air-cooled setup. As you can see, it's chambered and funneled. I don't know if Phil can get down in there to show you, but it's sort of funneled and it's gonna have no choice but to go down through there. And uh, yeah, so we're trying to catch all the vapors and pull it in. It's at 12, 10C, eight, seven, Five. <laughs> All right, you ready to start this test? I need, oh, I need more LN2, that's the problem. There we go. Now it's not blowing into the system, but it's certainly creating vapor. Well, 38.7. Bill, I um, I win. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what is it doing? Is it? My science teacher gave me an F. You believe that? <laughs> You're like, yeah. This is, this is phase two. You want to start the test? Yeah, start it. Well, the tubes are freezing. It's at 21 C under load so, so far. 10 degrees colder. Well, it's still climbing. Like, I don't think this is working like we want it to. It's not working! Look how frozen the cooler is though. I think the vapor inside the vapor chamber is frozen now and it's not transferring heat. <laughs> you think so? Look at that. Okay, let's stop it. Cause that didn't work at all. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's the mad scientist shit right there. Well, on paper, it seemed like a good idea. <gasps> We're not done yet. We can pour it through. I mean, there's no test running. I know, I'm just okay. seeing what happens. Yeah, it's not even doing anything anymore. <laughs> it's not really working. <laughs> I'm gonna give Asus a lot of credit for their build quality. Like that heat sink, I think, like you said, I is toast. Have to, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's what we learned. LN2 is cold and things it touches, it makes equally as cold. And apparently vapor chambers don't like being really cold because dipping it in the LN2 didn't work, which makes me kind of want to retry this test with like just one of these chunks of aluminum. Like a, <laughs> but then it's like, then we have to insulate the board and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this was a, this was like kind of a fun one in my opinion. Um, I was bored today. Like I said, I could have made a super helpful video about how to bring your laptop back from the dead if you have a brick BIOS. Maybe we'll just do that later. But anyway, this was fun. I had fun making it. So there's that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys didn't hate this video too much because we um, are doing what a lot of people would call as parts abuse. But I don't think that doesn't surprise anyone. At Send this us point. your stupid cooling ideas. So we've still got a few liters of LN2 now. We're just gonna kind of play with it off camera and start freezing things. So we'll see you guys in the next one. I love how this, restic this ridiculous rig, this ridiculous dig. See, and people think NVIDIA and AMD can't work together. This is what we were using to hold up the box. See, they're compatible. Whoa. That was a, a rubber glove. Yeah, there's your vapor. Even the ice is warm. That's crazy. Look, you can see where the ice is. Yeah. It looks like a black hole in the middle of our table. Black hole, sad. <laughs>